about to go live here. Yep. Alright, morning guys, morning, morning. See there's seven of us there and we're just uh, waiting on the rest of the crew till 8 o'clock. So uh, I'm just going to grab my attendance out and you guys can uh, let me uh, know you're here in the chat there. Awesome morning, Yuli. Morning, Kate. Morning, Owen. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why I switched it up, but when I just kind of forgot, I got back in my old routine. Morning, Erica. <clears throat> Warren Larissa Benjamin, very true. Morning, Kathleen. Oh, and have you actually seen this? More Ruth. Gab for sure, Kathleen says. Larissa, you can't say they're garbage and pretty dumb if you've seen all three. Or maybe you have a lot of siblings, so maybe you watch it with them. <laughs> it was the worst movie ever. Hey, Sam, good morning. Give me a charot. What is a charot? Charot. Oh, shout out. Yo, Kathleen. Welcome. Ben, <laughs> just <laughs> just put me on timeout for the day. All right, Maddie says Zach Efron. True. He got he was the only one with like actually movie deals though, wasn't he? Like he got like a bunch of movies and stuff out of that. Was that his start? I don't know. I couldn't tell you. <laughs> uh, Owen. <laughs> How did that randomly come up? What? Who's in the greatest showman that we would know? Like, I thought that was like Hugh Jackman. 
Why is that related to High School Musical? Just cause? Warren Sadie. Waiting on uh, Jared, Teddy, Crystal, um, SJ, and Zion. Oh, also Lucas and uh, Kendra. Oh, I didn't know Zach Efron was in The Greatest Showman. Weird. I didn't think he was in good movies. I thought he was just in like dumb teenager movies. Get with the program. <laughs> I, I apologize, Owen. <laughs> oh, so you're saying Sam Teddy's actually here then, technically, kind of. Why do we rewrite the stars? All right, we'll just give people uh, another minute or so here because I am missing a significant amount. And we did switch platforms, right? We switched from uh, Zoom to uh, back to YouTube again. So I know that takes some people time to adjust. Oh, here's some people. Um, so who's that? I see Jared, awesome. I don't know if Jared's was just like lag. I feel like I just got a bunch of messages all at once. Like uh, Kendra popped. Anyways, maybe they just all came at the same time. Um, who else rolled in at the same time? Uh, Kendra, Jared, and Crystal. Awesome. Waiting on Teddy. Oh, but I guess Teddy is making another account. Okay. Well, we'll get him to message Mrs. Banta. Uh, no SJ, no Zion, no Lucas. Uh, I don't think, none of these Zion shows up around now, though. Okay. So, oh, Teddy's in. Good man. Oh, good. I'm happy you can hear me, Kendra. All right, so I'm only missing uh, the three SJ Zion Lucas, and they can message Mrs. Banta because I'm hitting share with Office. Uh, back to looking at uh, yesterday. Uh, I guess this would have been two days ago now. Sorry, uh, we did perimeter and area of weird shapes. Right, we need to find the perimeter, the area of all these different things. So. Uh, let me just share my screen with you guys, uh, and then we can see if you guys had any uh, weird issues uh, with some of these. Remember, this was our doing our area, this is doing our perimeter. Remember to include the units, um, especially. Um, but uh, I think I asked you guys to try some of these or the ones in the note. Was there any of these that you guys were like, oh, man, I don't know how to do that. I got stuck on that, something like that. Or you want to confirm maybe that you had it correct, possibly. Because there is actually answers at the bottom. But they might have been incorrect. I was pretty sure they were correct, but might have been wrong. So let's check our answers with those there. If you did one of those ones on the 8.2 sheet, check now. Let me know if you have any questions. I'll take them up and then we'll rock and roll.
All right. Um, well, seems like we're busy talking about High School Musical, which is still fun. This is why we moved off from Zoom. Morning, Zion. If you could just message uh, Mrs. Banta that you're here, that'd be great. All right. So I don't really see too many uh, questions about some of these. Uh, maybe I'll look back through your notebooks, see how we did uh, some of those, because I don't get um, not getting a lot on there. Uh, so. There's one skill that we need to learn first today. So if you guys can make sure that you've got this note here, it's called solving quadratic equations with square roots. Um, it's just something that today's lesson expected you to know, but uh, that it never gave you. Hey, Lucas, good morning, man. If you can message Mrs. Banta that you're here, that'd be great. I so um, in terms of like solving and that's what we're really doing here I'm gonna highlight a couple words so I don't know if you guys don't have this message me but we're doing this it's called uh, solving quadratic equations um, with square roots it's right there in mine at least so the word solving here suggests that we use SAMDEB, right, bed mass for um, evaluating, calculating SAMDEB for solving. So we're going to be using that. Uh, quadratic equations means degree to polynomials. So you guys learned what a polynomial was earlier in the year. Remember, it was like uh, a variable with uh, possibly an exponent above it and a coefficient in front of it. Um, and uh, so basically, it's ones with degree two. So something squared, basically, quadratic uh, would be some variable squared. Uh, and so solving these ones is actually kind of weird. Um, and I want to kind of talk about like we we've done some equations right where you do SAMDEB where you'd normally have like you know uh, x minus 3 or 2x minus 3 equals um, 7 something like that right so to solve this using SAMDEB you do your addition and subtraction first so I'm going to get 2x equals 7 and then the opposite of minus 3 is plus 3 right so 7 plus 3 2x equals 10, and then we divide each side by, oops, sorry, I'm in my camera there, divide each side by 2, so x equals to 10 divided by 2 is 5. So these were solving our linear equations, and they're all degree 1, because technically, this is x to the 1, there's like x times itself, 1 times, it's just x, right? So we've solved those ones in the past, but uh, what you need to be able to do today is solve ones that um, are of degree two. And so we'll just talk about what the what the process is with that. So I'll show you an easy one first. If we're looking at this here, I think we all know what the exponent does. I think we know like if we said, if I told you guys what is three squared, remember three squared is three times three and you know that three squared is nine, right? Three times three is nine, three squared is nine. So if I asked you guys, you know, what is a squared equals 9, and I said solve for 9, well, what's missing here? You're asking yourself, okay, what squared is equal to 9? Well, it's 3, right? That'd be one of our options for sure, is 3. Um, we'll, we'll actually see that as you're doing this, like 3 works, right? Obviously, but... This is actually asking yourself all of the possibilities squared equals nine. Yes, here three squared is nine. Perfect. But what if I said to you guys like, okay, three works, right? You could say that, sorry, my A and my three look the exact same. Let's just make it in red, maybe something like that. 
So what if I said yes, a could equal three, right? Because three squared is nine. But what do you think about negative three squared, right? That'd be negative three times negative three. Remember, two negatives make a positive. So in that case, huh, also positive nine, right? So here, when I'm thinking about what could a be, I could say a is positive three, right? Because three squared is nine, or a could equal negative three. Either one would be okay. So actually, when you solve these equations, we're very used to getting one answer, but often there is two answers. There's the positive and negative. Um, you can do positive three or negative three when you solve this. So I just wrote this on the side, um, but uh, I think maybe if you guys write that on the side of your note as well for solving quadratics, that would be wise. Um, but we'll do a couple examples here and then we'll, we'll party. So you've got three and negative three. Can you guys uh, just say done when you're done in the chat? Just so I know. I think some of us were probably pulling in late, messaging Mrs. Banta, uh, opening up our notes, uh, finding this this sheet, syncing things like that. So if you could just say done when you have this down and you're solving your quadratics. Good. Zion's done. Sam's done. decent chunk of us are done. So if I said, what are the answers to this one here? A squared equals four, the one right beside it, right? Um, what would you guys say? What is, what is A equal to here? What is my, uh, what is my answer here? What are we saying? What squared, you're saying something squared is four, right? You want to know what A is. What is A? Yeah, Ben says negative two or two, right? So two or a equals negative two. Okay, so um, basically that's pretty easy. And I think you guys are caught on to that. But when you get something like, even like this here, we'll do something a little bit smaller. Uh, X squared equals 21, okay? Or a squared equals 21, it doesn't matter. A, X, they're all variables, right? They're all the letters. So when you got X squared equals 21, and you ask yourself in your brain, okay, what times what is 21? They have to be the same, right? Like, I know 7 times 3 is 21, but remember, it has to be the same number. Like, if I do 3 squared, right, that's 9. 4 squared is 16. 5 squared is 25, right? If 4 squared is 16 and 5 squared is too big, it's 25, I know I'm looking for something between 16 and 25, right? 21. So it's probably like somewhere in the four and a half range, but I want to be accurate with it. So you actually have to think, remember when we do SAMDEB? Remember opposite operations, right? Opposite operations, operations. And you guys told me for Sam Deb, right? The opposite of subtraction or addition was the other one. So it's plus or minus. The opposite of multiplying, right, was dividing. And so we did all those things in there. Those were our opposite operations. If you add it on one side, you had to subtract on the other, multiply on one side, divide on the other. Uh, and then the other opposite operations are, which we're gonna do right here, is something squared Doing the opposite of that is the square root. And maybe some of you already knew that, but um, it's just our, our way of solving here. Uh, and so if I wanted to calculate this thing here, I'll just erase this little um, something uh, or that circle there, but those are our opposite operations. So I'm gonna give you a second to get that down. But if I want to say, take this little two here and get rid of it. Remember our goal is to get X by itself. So when I say I want to get rid of this two, we need to do the opposite of that, right? 
So when you have something squared, the opposite of it is taking the square root. Uh, and you can know that because if you were to type in your calculator, the square root, oops, that was supposed to be a pen. The square root of three squared, that's just gonna be three if you're able to type that in your calculator or the square root of anything squared is just itself. Um, it just gets rid of it. And so to get rid of that little two there, you just are going to say, okay, you're gone and you're gonna be equal to the square root of 21. Now, when I type in the square root of 21 here, my calculator is gonna be probably pretty annoying because I think you have to go in this calculator, I think you have to go uh, 21 and then you have to hit the square root which um, where are you Okay, well this one has it, I don't understand. Technically that little two there doesn't have to be there, it's just square root, uh, the second root, whatever. Um, so anyways, what did I do? 21 square root right there. And so we see it's 4.5, it's a crazy decimal, right? And so if you actually look at our prediction, right? We said it was gonna be between four and five. Um, oh, Teddy says there's a second function, oopsies. Oh, nice, thanks, Teddy. Awesome, awesome, right there, right there, perfect. I didn't even know what that was, that button. I, it doesn't seem like, normally it's like shift or something like that, that's kind of funny. Okay, so we get, uh, oops, I don't even remember what we had, 21 square root. Uh, it'd be four point, let's call it 4.6, okay? So we get x equals 4.6. But when you do this, remember how last time you had the, the uh, positive and the negative? That means 4.6 times 4.6 is 21, but also negative 4.6 times negative 4.6. So you get two values of x, x equals negative 4.6 as well. Often, and this is what I would have you do to not <clears throat> Sorry, to not forget because it's crazy. Even grade 11, unbelievable how many times people forget uh, on my math test is when you do this square root thing here, you normally write this plus or minus. That's what that means. It means that when you do the square root in your calculator, it only gives you the positive one, but you want to write in your answer the plus and minus version of that. So Often you write that little bit in there, but again, maybe I don't want to confuse you guys in grade nine, so let's just write that, because that's what you're actually typing in your calculator, and then you just know that you get a positive and a negative. All right, uh, hit me up uh, in the chat uh, when you are happy with that. All right, Zion says nice. Okay, so, uh, I don't know, something like this, okay? So when you're doing solving, you need to remember SAMDEB. Oops, SAMDUB. SAMDEB. So the big uh, thing here is if you follow SAMDEB, like now we have more than one operation, right? It's not just something squared. So we need to do our subtraction and addition first, right? That always comes first. Then we do our multiplication and division. And then we do our uh, exponents and brackets. And this little exponent, that is the squared part, right? That's something squared. So that's actually gonna be last, okay? Uh, so we actually are going to do our subtraction and addition first. So that means you need to think about moving this eight across first. 
that's the first step. So you're going to get equals 28 minus 8. Well, Zion, it'd kind of be like totally, uh, yeah, you're, you're never going to get something when it's a repeated decimal like that. Like if you wrote down all the decimals, you'd still be wrong. Like there's an infinite number of decimals. Uh, it just keeps going on forever. Yeah, like it, basically there's no winning there, right? Like, yes, it it doesn't equal perfectly, but you have to round at some point. So in this case, we get x squared equals 20. You're right, it's, it's not totally accurate when you go back because we did round, right? Um, often if you needed to do more steps and that wasn't just you throwing your answer down, you just leave it as the ants button in your calculator, like ANS. Uh, okay, so now we've we've done that. We looked, is there any multiplication or addition? Nope, there's no multiplication or addition, okay. Uh, and so then we can do our square root, right? So now we get x equals the square root of 20. And uh, here, I'm just going to do my phone because it's so much easier on my phone. I get 4.5. And remember, that also means you're going to get negative 4.5. So those are my two answers. Oopsies, you can't see what I was doing. So that is solving quadratics. We'll do a couple more examples of that in the actual lesson today. Um, but... Uh, whew, we'll... Um, We'll move on to the actual lesson because that like it'll follow through. Is there any questions about any of the steps we took there? Sorry if I stopped for a bit there, Kathleen. Okay. I don't know why everyone's saying minus a dollar here, but anyways, am I frozen? All right, well, people say I'm good to go. So anyways, um, we're going to talk about the Pythagorean theorem here. Uh, and uh, OK, awesome. People are saying it. we're good. We're good. Uh, I don't know if you did much on this. I heard some people talk about this earlier, so I know some people have heard of it. Um, but uh, basically, it's a it's a formula that helps us calculate side lengths of, of triangles. Yes, Benny, there should be Bible if it's Thursday. Um, and so uh, it's using something, and I'm going to define it first, but it's using something called the uh, hypothesis, or sorry, hypotenuse, not hypothesis. We talked about that last unit, a hypotenuse. So you guys might have heard of that side length before, but the hypotenuse basically is the opposite to the 90 degrees in a right angle triangle. So I think we all know what a right angle triangle is. It's the triangle that has any triangle that has a 90 degree angle in it, right? And so if you're asking yourself, okay, what is the longest side here? Well, the longest side is always the one across from the right angle. This is the hypotenuse. Because this is the biggest opening here. 90 degrees is bigger than either of these, right? Because 90 degrees is half of what the angles in the triangle would be. So it's definitely the biggest of the three. So this formula only works 
this Pythagorean theorem. It only works for right angled triangles. I will explain it in a second. Okay, and I want to explain to you why. So I'm just going to draw a little picture for this for you. All right, so uh, there's this mathematician named Pythagoras, uh, some old dude, he did. Uh, and uh, basically what he discovered is he looked at a right angle triangle and he said, okay, like I'm going to look at this right angle triangle and I'm going to see that, you know, each side length, he was, he was kind of playing around with different shapes, things like that, making some drawings. And he said, oh, if I make like something over here, a square here, a square, where I'm going to call this side length like A. Okay, and then I want to make this side length A. So he made a square coming off of there. Uh, and then he made another square coming off of this side length. So it'd be a bit bigger, looks like, in our case here. All right, where whatever this side length is, B here. I'm going to make that a bit thicker. It's pretty lame. It was a square that was B by B. Okay. Uh, and so then what he discovered is, okay, what if I make a square coming off of the hypotenuse here? Uh, and he might call that side C, okay? Uh, and so if he makes a, that's going to be the biggest side length, right? We talked about how that hypotenuse, because it's across from the biggest angle, the biggest opening, you can have a bigger side length on that side. So C is a significantly bigger square. I somehow can't draw up there, can I? Oh, maybe. So it's a C by C square. So what he discovered is that if you look at the area of the orange thing, that area there would be equal to C squared, right? The area there. Uh, and here, the area would be equal to B squared, right? B times B, right? And then in here, the area would be equal to a squared. And the cool thing was, is that uh, what he would do is he would use like these like little like number blocks, right? So let's just say um, this one here is, uh, do we learn sign today as well? Uh, not today, Kathleen. Not today. Uh, don't sing. Uh, the area of this one, like um, if this was uh, four here, okay. So if this thing was four long, which means that it was, right, four by four, there'd be 16 total blocks in there. If this one was maybe five long, So it'd be like a five by five. So this has 16 blocks. This has 25 blocks. What he did is he counted up the number of those same size blocks that fit in here. Would fit in there. Uh, and basically, it was the same amount as this 25 and the 16 put together, um, but exactly the same amount. Uh, so if you add those together, right, we get 35 uh, plus another 6 to be 41. That's how many he counted and he proved 
that would fit in there. Uh, and there's some really cool activities and videos online. Uh, I'll just show you guys uh, in a second here, um, once you get that down, um, that show you what this means. But basically what it means is, is that the area of the orange one, your C squared, is equal to the area of the red one, A squared, uh, plus the area of the green one, B squared. So the area of this big side here was equal to the area of the other two. So let's just show you, there's a really cool video. Um, Okay, I'll just show you this here. So she's got water in these two areas. She flips it. And you'll see that that same amount of water fills up perfectly in there. Pretty cool, eh? So that, that's the hypotenuse. Right, because this is the side across from the right angle. And so it fills up perfectly. And then the water flips over. And yes, Benny, it'll always be the case. Only for a right angle triangle, though. Bingo. And you can see there's other proofs. Like this one is my favorite in terms of like a, a video kind of thing. Uh, but there's other proofs in here, too, um, that people did. Um, oh, that's really annoying. Uh, but it's the same idea, right? Where they take these little squares and they make little squares there, right? Are they going to be the same amount? And that's the, that's the idea there. Um, and I don't think we need to, well, that's really annoying and frustrating. Just make the shape. Yeah. So they're just saying that square plus that square equals that square. And they would just go on to prove that with the little squares and put them together there. But, um, Anyways, I think the water example does pretty good. And you guys can see what I was trying to talk about now by saying like, okay, if there's three by three, that's nine, four by four is 16. That means this one is 25 squares, should be five by five, right? Perfect. And so you can see how this kind of helps us to solve uh, things as we go through here. So let me just close that down. So we know that our formula here, and you can see that we've wrote it the exact same way, is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. It doesn't matter which side a and b are. The only one that really matters is that c is the hypotenuse. So we should underline that there. C is always the one that's the biggest side. So you just make sure when you've got your formula that something plus something equals something, you have that C, that hypotenuse, that biggest side on the outside there. So we can use this to solve for things. Um, and so here's actually a really interesting problem. Uh, when you guys get like, um, you know, like a 54 inch TV, something like that, okay? Uh, you wanna know like, okay, what does that mean? Well, when you advertise TV lengths, uh, they're not like giving, they're only giving you one inch or one dimension, right? And so they're actually giving you this diagonal from here to here, okay? That diagonal from there to there. But like when you look at your TV, you're like, uh, somebody asks you, you know, how many inches is your TV? Well, here's how you can figure it out if you don't actually know, right? If you've lost the packaging or whatever, um, to figure out what the advertised uh, like actual dimension of it was, that diagonal here, let's see. So you've measured your TV, you used a ruler, or um, I guess you'd have to use a tape measure because it's too long here, but you see that it is 48 inches by 27 inches. So, um, or I might as well just use my same red one, right? So we've got our 27 by 48, and I wanna know what that diagonal is. And so I can kind of look at that like a triangle, right? And TVs have right angles. So I'm just going to copy that, or I guess we can just deal with it like that. But that is our little triangle there. And so if we're looking at this bit, 
we want to know what the hypotenuse is, right? There are right angles here across from it. We'd have our hypotenuse. We'll call it C just for simplicity's sake. But in this case here, you know that that hypotenuse, so C squared is going to equal to A squared plus B squared. Basically, it doesn't really matter, right? You're going to have this squared plus this squared. So we get 27 squared plus 48 squared. So C squared, and at this point, we're just calculating. We're not using SAMDEB yet because we need to actually get our 27 squared plus our 48 squared. Uh, and I'm going to get 3033. But now we can do our formula where we get C equals the square root of 3033. Uh, and so I'm going to get C is equal to 55.1. Uh, remember that we could also in our calculators figure it would be negative 55.1. But you guys should know, right? Does it make sense that we have a negative inch on our TV because it's length? No, right? So the only answer is therefore it's a, I'm sure you just round and say 55, but 55.1 inch TV. Oh. Okay, I'm gonna do one more example with you. One more example, we'll just do example two. We don't need to do example three. It's the same idea. Okay, so we got that one down. Give me a thumbs up when you're good, if you understand, if you need a, need a question about that one. Okay, Jenna's changing a light bulb. She's got a four meter ladder leaned against a vertical wall. So let's draw the wall first. It's a vertical wall. Wall e. Okay, people are good. Awesome. Uh, and uh, she knows that the base of the ladder, I'm going to draw the ladder in black. Ladder. She knows that the ladder itself is four meters long, right? So the ladder is four four meters. She knows that the base, like the distance from the ladder to the wall, it's 1.4 meters from the wall, but she wants to know like how high up is her ladder going to go. Uh, so we want to know like what is the basically the height that we're going up on the wall here. So here's the deal. This one's a little bit harder. Now we know, thinking about hypotenuse, whoa, that was weird. Uh, okay. We know what the uh, the hypotenuse is, right? Remember, hypotenuse is the uh, four. So hypotenuse C equals four. So when we do C squared equals A squared plus B squared, you're gonna get four squared equals, and then it'll be like this number squared plus this number squared. We're gonna call that X or B. I guess we'll call it B. Keep things simple. And we'll say this one is A, and this one is your C. So four squared equals 1.4 squared plus B squared, okay? Now, Start off by calculating what you can. You're going to learn that 4 squared is 16. 1.4 squared is, I couldn't tell you. Let's figure it out. One point nine six equals b squared. And now, oops, sorry, plus b squared. 
now we can do samdeb for solving. Now that we've got something with just straight up numbers. Okay, so remember subtraction addition first. So we're gonna get 16, oh, I should use red. 16 minus 1.96 equals b squared. If I do 16 minus 1.96, I get 14.04. equals b squared. Owen says our answer is going to be 2.6. Good for him. Um, I'm not up to there. Maybe he was saying something about differently. I think earlier. Sorry. Um, and so uh, remember, we're going to do our square root. So b equals the square root of 14.04. So b is going to equal. I get 3.75, 3 and 3 quarters. And remember, there would also be one where it says b equals negative 3.75, but it can't be a negative height. Can't be a negative height. So the height up the wall, Height up wall is 3.75 meters. Sorry about freezing there, Erica. I don't know what's happening there. All right, uh, let's put this into action. So there's some pretty decent uh, questions in here. Uh, so let's go uh, page uh, 445. We gotta do all the in Ontario Canada ones. So number, uh, well, you should probably try A, uh, two is going to be a good one. Uh, ooh, um, that looks kind of fun. I would say try number five, uh, A, B, I guess. And then finish it off with I wonder if you can try number 12. Something like that. Alrighty. So that's it for today. Uh, if you guys can try that, you still got 25 minutes. So you should be got uh, lots of time. I'll stick around for a minute for uh, any questions. But other than that, you guys are good to go. Remember those guys that showed up late, please message Mrs. Banta. One A, two, five A, B, and twelve. Take a picture of that, write that down. Should be got lots of time. Yep, you're gonna be good. No problem. Alright guys, uh, shoot me a message in Teams if uh, you've got any questions on that.